Praise the Lord. Mr. Riliki, you are designated prayer warrior. Father, Lord, we thank you. Everlasting King of Kings, God of Lord, Father, Lord, we thank you once again. We appreciate you for everything you have been doing in our life. We thank you for the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We thank you because you have been the one that has guided our, our life. Your word has been a light onto our path, Holy Spirit, Lord. Father, we are here once again to learn at your feet. We are here once again to fellowship with you. We are here once again to know your ways, to understand your will. Father, Lord, help us, Holy Spirit, Lord. Father, help us, King of King. Help us, Lord of Lord. Every stumbling block, Father, remove it. Whatever might be the obstacle on their way that does not want us to learn or to understand you, Jehovah Lord, remove it today in Jesus' name. Father, heal our hearts, heal our mind, heal our eyes, heal our hear. As we are here in the Holy Spirit, Lord, teach us to particularize the word. Let us also be a doer as we have been a hearer. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. You always, your prayer is about us. And then when you end it, you make it only you. In Jesus' name, I pray. <laughs> Since you have, been you have included us all through the prayers, then we should also be included in the, in the conclusion okay. of it. Okay, sir. Uh, this evening, we're dealing with a topic which my judgment is uh, it's not that easy. It's quite simply, it's about discipleship. And the cost of discipleship. What is the cost of discipleship? Can Begay help us at this juncture? What will it cost us if we were to become the disciples of Christ? Um, good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Um, to become the disciple of Christ, I think what it will cost us is um, our self, our life, um, is foregoing everything that is pleasurable to us. So being a disciple Only of Christ, the pleasurable things. Um, those are the, those are the, those are the ones that are more difficult to let go. I mean, you'll be willing to let go the ones that are not pleasuring to you. <laughs> so um, for me, that, that, those are the things that it will really cost. Those things that we consider good. Those things that we... Those things that we're usually mindful about you know such things you know like your shelter your food your clothes and then you now realize that you have to at some point give them up and you're not supposed to be bothered about your self self-respect um for most people you are now being told that when they slap you ordinarily you would have you know fought back when you are told to turn the other cheek um all of those things are what I consider the, the cost for following Christ. So is, is, is Begay a disciple? Yes, Begay is a disciple. Okay, thank God. <laughs> thank God. Um, Dr. what do you consider to be the cost of discipleship? The first thing that came to mind is that uh, our life, we, our life, we will lose our life. Which is which? Which uh, the the translation to me is that uh, we are starting from the scratch all over again. Which means that the life that we have before, that we have grown to an adult, we have to let it go and start again from a little child. Then start to walk, learning how to walk again. Which means that we are a beginner. We don't know anything. So. We now, we now have to start learning a new life, how to walk, how to move, how to do things, how to think, our emotions, our everything must start newly. You know, must start newly, which we know that is something very difficult. It's only Jesus that can help us to go through it. So, because it's like 
a new beginning, you know, grow into a new being, grow into a new understanding, grow into a new, a new uh, ideology, different from the whole life. So, so we are going to lose all the one thing that we have been struggling for, we have been building or building up all the foundation, everything is going to crumble, you know? So we go, that's the cost. We are going to lose all those things. The new one is the one that we're gonna have to, to learn and imbibe, to work by, by it. Let's look at two scriptures that will shed more light on this. Jesus speaking. First one is Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? The more precise definition in uh, Luke 14, 33. Jesus says, likewise, Whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. So the condition that he laid here says that his, his disciple must forsake all that he has. Part of what we want to deal with is what forsaking all entails. Let me go next to Yemisi. Yemisi, good evening. Good evening. What are our rights as followers of Christ? All right. Yes. We have we have a right to to come into the presence of God. And we have we have rights of ownership of Christ. Those are the only rights I can think of. Ownership of Christ. What do you mean? You own Christ. Yeah. He, he, what does that mean in practical terms? It means that he is our inheritance. We 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 have everything that he died to leave us. Let me come back to you, James. Begin. Do we have any rights as followers of Christ? Um, I would say no. We do not have <clears throat> any rights. You don't agree because, with the answer. Um, um, you don't share your so Technically. <laughs> technically. So not, I'm trying not, to knock not, your heads together. I'm trying to knock. <laughs> <laughs> so why why I why I say we do not have any rights um, is because we have surrendered everything to him. And so whatever we think is our right is, um, has been submitted to his will. So in that case, I, I really do not think we have any right. Okay, thank you. Dr. 
Yes, sir. Jesus says, if any man would come after him, let him deny himself. What does that mean? How do we deny ourselves? Well, uh, one of the one of the things he's talking about is that we we let go of every right that we have. That it is we have to depend on him. We have to, which means that we are no no more in control anymore. Deny ourselves from taking a decision or deny ourselves from deciding on certain things about our life. It is him that is the one that uh, that, will, that decide for us. We we'll, the right. We should let it go. We're we saying that we should let our right go for his own to to to, to, take, to take over whatever, whatever we, we we are doing. Which means that we don't have any right for anything anymore. We have to deny the right that we have. We have to deny uh, us being the one to decide. Decision is not in our in our hands again. In ourselves of the decision, we, which means that he is the one that determines for us. Thank you. Yeah, Missy. How can we give up all rights to ourselves? Well, I think um, which is another translation for denying ourselves to give up every right. So, so um, my understanding is that when we come into a relationship with Christ, when when we uh, we we agree to give ourselves to Him. He will start to give us very clear instructions about what he wants from us. And the, the point is to, I don't I don't I don't understand the function of preempting what he's going to ask because usually from my experience you don't know. Uh, we know. So, That's why we are just having a discussion. We know what he wants. Um well I, I would say that I did not know. So, but in essence, I just had to be willing to follow when he asked me and to do what he asked me to do. So, and, and that means immediately he tells me. So like you say, you are in the army, you do as you're told. When yes, you're but told, there are some things that he has already told you in the scriptures. That he wants it to be. So you don't have to wait for him to now repeat them. Are you asking me? Did I what? Are you asking me what those things are? No, I just made a statement. I said there are some things he's already told you. And he yes. wants to do. You don't have to wait for him now to now tell you again. Yeah, he said we should. Um... So I'm just saying, there are some things you, you say that you wait for him to tell you to do certain things. I say, well, you don't have to wait for him to do a lot of things because he's already told you to do a lot of things. Yes. Then we should. Um... Hmm? I'll come back to you. Yeah. I'll yeah. come back to you. Um, uh, Samukwa, good evening. Sam, good evening. Is Sam here? Okay. I think he's having some problem with his system. Let me go to Dotun. What are some of the rights that we are required to give up? Just name one or two of them. Yeah, where the first one I can talk about where you know, is to is to lead our life. Lead our life in the sense that uh, mm, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, 
I'm talking about rights. Okay, so on what the right, the rights. I said, give me one or two of the rights that we are required to give up. Okay, well, basically, I think, I basically, basically what we want to do today is we want to look at some of the rights that we are required to give up. Okay? Yes, sir. And, uh, and that's where the difficulty lies. Because even in, in terms of just constructing the, the questions, I was having some, <laughs> I was having some difficulty. So let me start with you, Dr. <laughs> uh, the right to retaliate. All right. Why do, Why do we give it up? Can you talk about it? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the right to retaliate because he, he, uh, there's this particular scripture that says that vengeance is his, you know, and he will repay. The, you know, if we look at it from that scripture, which means that if anybody does anything wrong to us, we as children, we should always understand that since he's the one that is behind everything, we don't have to retaliate. Judgment is his. You know, we are not the one to judge. He, he, he knows. So he has already given us that word that. Hold on, hold on. You know, jumping the gun a little bit. What, first of all, is the right to retaliate? And why does a man have the right to retaliate? Before we then address the issue of giving up that right. Well, according to according to to uh, the law of Moses, I said uh, uh, I said high for an high, you know, high for an high. If you look at the earth principle of high for an high, you know, give the you give him uh, you give man prerogative to retaliate when man does something, you, you know. But when we go into Christ, and Christ has already I'm taken over. I mean, you are not explaining the right; you're just stating it. Okay. Well, I, maybe I don't know how to, to, to explain it. Maybe I should just, I should just listen. You don't know how to explain the right to retaliate. Okay, all right. Let me ask Big Begit, can you give us an understanding of the right to retaliate? Um, <clears throat> well, my understanding of the right <clears throat> to retaliate is... First, understanding that someone has, um, how do I put it now? Okay. So the right to retaliate is um, simply knowing that someone has infringed on your rights, if I can use that, and you feel there has to be repercussion. So the person has to pay for infringing on that right. And the law, you, you will take the law into your hands by making sure the person, um, person pays. I don't know if that answers is that, your question. Is that, is, is that right legitimate? The right is, is not legitimate. Why not? But, um, so, Think, think, think before what you have, answer. What I have... Just, um, just slow down, slow down a little bit. And I think about it. Is the right legitimate? Think for a minute. Is it legitimate that if somebody slaps you, you should slap them back? I do not think it's legitimate. Does God consider it to be legitimate? No, it doesn't. Okay. Why do you think it is not legitimate? And why do you think God does not consider it to be legitimate? Okay, I think that it is not legitimate because um, of what I've seen around me. Would God give an illegitimate law? 
No. So why is it in the law of Moses that an eye for an eye? I think it was because the that was what the people wanted. So does God give an illegitimate law because what the people because the people want it? No, God does not. I think that was that was um so I, that was an eye for an eye is illegitimate. Well, I that was why Jesus had to come. And does then God, does God operate on an eye to eye basis? No. I do not think God operates on an eye for an eye basis. With the measure you used, shall we measure to you? Is that is that is that is that not? Well, that, that that's that's um, the same principle. That is not that is not necessarily um, an eye for an eye. So if 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 God is saying, God how is it is, with the measure you use to be measured to you? So I'll, let me give you an example. Even with um, uh, natural law. You know, the reason why I would not accept that um, one should retaliate when an injustice is done to the person because if everybody goes about retaliating, it's, it's I mean, where's the place of belief? Where's the place of law court? You know, there's, there's an institution that has been built to try these people and then, um, uphold justice yeah but, the, now, but but that institution does that institution is it is it is it based on retaliation the processes of that institution is it based on retaliation no it's based on justice equity yes but fairness is equity not retaliation is it is equity not an eye for an eye i would not I would not so, so consider why, why is it that if you steal something hmm. and you are caught, you go to jail for it? Yes, that's that is justice. That is paying for what you have done. Now, um, the person is that not the retaliation paid, for what you what you stole? Not from the person, from not those from who who? have authority. Not from the person who you stole. Whoever is from, you know, just, just the principle. Whether it's from the person or not. I mean, you know, if God slaps you or I slap you, the fact that God slaps you doesn't mean that when God slaps you, it's not a slap, is it? It's still a slap. It depends if the person slapping you has the authority to do so. It doesn't matter. I mean, you know, if 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 uh, if somebody has the authority to give you five naira. And I don't have the authority, I give you five naira. What's the difference? Both of us gave you five naira. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I think that there's a difference. Okay, so let, let, uh, let's, let's, let's look at it in terms of principle. Yeah. God says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Yeah. Is it retaliating? He's simply telling you, begin not to retaliate. But he says yes. he will, yes, because he, he, the principle of retaliation is legitimate. Mm. All that God has done is to say, "Doctor, um, or um, beget, let me retaliate for you." But he doesn't say, "You have been slapped." I'm not going to do anything about it, and that is justice. No. He says, I will take vengeance for what happened to you. Okay, I, I get your position. I, I, I agree. So, one, the principle of retaliation is legitimate. Okay? Mm -hmm. But, and this is the difficult element in it. God is asking Bege that in spite of that legitimacy, give it up. Mm. Okay? Now, mm. if it wasn't legitimate, it might even be easier. But precisely because it is legitimate, it says, leave it to me. I will do it. So, he wants us to give up the right to retaliate. 
Yeah. In order to do that, we have to deny ourselves. What is the difficulty that uh, begin? In denying ourselves. Yes, in that in that context. What is yeah, the difficulty? I think the difficulty is uh, it, it shows less of less of us. Um so I, I mean at that point. <laughs> Does the difficulty not arise from the legitimacy? Yes, exactly. The, the difficulty arises from the legitimacy. You know it is Precisely. legitimate. Yeah. And you know, you know, you ordinarily you should be you should be able to then you are not, yes. <laughs> and sometimes your your yourself tells you, don't take this kind of rubbish show. Uh -uh. Yes. I, I just have this lying <laughs> down now. I mean, are you, are, are you an idiot? Are you a mumu? What's the matter with you? Come on, mm. do something. Mm. And just allow this to just go like that. Thank you. Yes, let me see. I'm not, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure about the right to re retaliate if we actually do have a right to retaliate. You're not sure about the right to retaliate. When you put it like why, that, why, why is why is sin a debt? Yeah, exactly. And what, what do you mean exactly? What, what, does they, what do you exactly mean? You no, say God it. says you are not going to get away with it. Every sin is a debt. Every single sin, yeah. and people are sinning all the time. So yes. we are sinning against people. People are sinning against us. If if we if we if there's a legitimacy in retaliation, then all of us would be would be gone. There would be none of us that would be here. So that's for me. I feel like. Um, <laughs> So yeah, me see what happened under the law. Under the law, an eye for an eye, the tooth for a tooth. Even if you look, in fact, what they did was that they 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 created some cities of refuge. Where that's what I mean. So so that's what that's not that's not what, that's not what you mean. That's they, what I mean. They, they created some cities of refuge. Where so, some people can run to if they did it inadvertently. They still didn't get what they deserved. All right. In the first instance, you didn't catch everybody who committed an offense or, or broke the law. So the people you, you were you put your hand on and caught them were the ones that you you no, you, are, you are the one that said that an eye for an eye is impracticable. It is impracticable. And I said, said well, it was practiced under the law. It, well, I'm saying that it, it was practiced as a, it, it, as it was a ceremonial thing, because if you think about it, well, there was no, ceremonial. there's no way that you can punish everyone. You can retaliate against everyone for their sin. There is, there is. But, but, but we do it when we're in the world. So what happens? We do it when we're in the world. Somebody abuses us, abuses us, we abuse him back. Yeah, but it's not a, it's not, it's not a right. It isn't. So it is it is a practice. It isn't but I'm saying, okay, we are, it's a culture. You are, you are jumping okay. from different, you're jumping from different things to refer to this. Okay, so let us look under the law. Okay. Under the law, it was a right. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. It is the right of somebody whose eye was lost to take the eye, right? It was, it was established under the law as a right. So retaliation was legitimate. You know. Wasn't it? Huh? Was it not? It was legitimate. It was even written into the law. 
Why did Jesus say, if you forgive Under it, the law, Jesus established the law. Under the law. It was legitimate. He fulfilled the law, right? That's what he did. So, by so you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are changing the scenario. <laughs> you are the one who told me it is impossible to operate under the legitimacy of an eye to an eye. Exactly. I said, well, it existed under the law. So let us deal with that first before you bring Jesus into it, because that's a different okay. area. Uh, no, that's a, that's, a that's a different period. Pardon? Because Jesus came to fulfill the law. So when he, his explanation of that for me is hinged on when, when he tells them that if you forgive anyone, I forgive him also. I forgive him. So what he was telling them in essence was <laughs> you don't really want retaliation. Retaliation is not legitimate. There's nothing legitimate about retaliation. So, so, so let, us, let us go to the New Testament. In the New Testament, it is still legitimized because God says, vengeance is mine. In which case, God is still going to extract an eye for an eye. But if you forgive that person, he won't. He's still, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. If you forgive that person, he's still going to do it. No. Okay, please, let's, let's understand the principle of forgiveness. It's important, okay? David was forgiven, right? For his adultery. But he still paid the price. He still paid the penalty. Forgiveness does not absolve you from the penalty. All right? So David took somebody's wife and his sons took, took his concubines. <laughs> the fact that he was forgiven did not change the equation. Uh, David got somebody killed. The sword did not leave his house. In the, New, in the New Testament, uh, God says, but it was, it was God that was implementing even that in the Old Testament. So the fact that you are forgiven something doesn't mean that you will not suffer the penalty. Even in the New Testament, uh, you will still suffer the punishment. That is why Judgment begins in the house of God. So we ask for forgiveness. We are granted the forgiveness. But all kinds of things happen to us because of what we did. All kinds of things happen to us for what other people did. I beg your pardon? I'm just concerned. All kinds of things happen to us because of what we did. Of other people's sins as well. So what my my my... I guess my problem is that that equation is just not clean. So you, you sin and then you pay uh, because there is some consequence, some retaliation, some- I, Sin not, always has consequences. Yes, I agree. Yeah. But when the yeah, consequences- And, and, and the, the principle behind that is the principle of an eye for an eye. Well, whether the consequence happens to the person who actually committed the sin. The, conse the, the, the consequences always happen to the person who committed the sin. It might have implications for others, but the, the person who committed the sin is going to reap the consequences. Huh. I'm not sure about that, too. It's, uh, okay, it's, maybe somebody else can talk on this because, you know, uh, there is no escaping. If you sin, you are going to suffer the consequences. Precisely because God is a God of justice. And his justice, uh, his justice, the Bible says his mercy rejoices against his judgment. But you will Suffer the consequences of your sin. Now, 
these of us are sticking away with the big scene of the world. But they, you know, there are all kinds of things that we're still doing now. Huh? It's the same principle of sowing and reaping. What you sow, you will reap. It's the principle of God. Uh, Sam, is your system working now? No, it is not. It is uh, not. For now, yes, it is. Okay, uh, speak. You, can you hear me? Yeah, can I, can hear hear me? You, I can hear you now. Okay. Okay, what is your opinion on this discussion? I think I, I, I believe you have been listening. Yes, I have. Okay, what let's have my your opinion. opinion. Okay. Now, the you are, the question is the um you are, you are asking what is the um the legitimacy of retaliation? No, in fact, you is know, that where okay, okay. I get it from there? No, the the, uh, the 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 issue is this that I'm going to establish. Jesus says that we should deny ourselves, right? Okay. Okay. Now, in order to deny ourselves, there are certain things that we believe are legitimate. And those okay. things that are legitimate in themselves, he's gonna ask us to forsake. Okay. Just as an example, you know, somebody kills my sister. Okay? Yes. Now, and I don't like the person. Okay? Now, 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 um, there is a legitimacy in me not liking somebody who kills my sister because I love my sister and the person killed the person, you know. But what Jesus then says is that we should deny ourselves of that legitimacy. We should deny ourselves the legitimacy of not liking the person. Even though <laughs> it seems not to like the person. And in many respects, you might not blame us for not liking the person. Jesus says, forgo it and love the person. That's where the discussion is at. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, I'm aware. Okay. So, so, taking it from so, so taking it from that, we were looking specifically at retaliation. That Okay. If somebody slaps you, do you not have a right to slap the person back? And that is the principle of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But now Jesus yeah. is saying, relinquish that right. Okay, yes. Because one of the requirements of discipleship is to deny yourself of even that right to retaliate. True, true, very true. So where we're, where we're having some differences is that, maybe semantic or whatever, is that the MC says we don't have a right to retaliate. I say we have a right to retaliate but we have, we have to give it up. Definitely, we have a right to retaliate because everything is on the everything is on the uh, an eye for an eye principle. Even even in the court of law, you have a problem with somebody. I'm not sure I, I can recall any court case where you, you you went to court with someone and then the judge now says that. Okay, for the offense that you have committed, uh, you are forgiven. Go. No, if a case is proven against you, you will pay a penalty straight. 
So the, the, there's, I'm, I, I don't remember ever hearing that a case was proven against somebody and then they, they now said, okay, um, you are forgiven. So even the court, the, the legal system is built on the premise of uh, um, retribution. So, you know, somebody has to pay for what the person has done, you know? And so the question is, I mean, it's clear. In every situation, we do have the right, like I heard you say before, it was in the law in the Old Testament. Even in the New Testament, we have, is it not, haven't we seen by the measure with which you give, so shall you receive. So whether it is New Testament or Old Testament, I think the, the provision is there clearly that there is, uh, um, there is a, there is a, a legitimacy about retaliation. The issue is now whether or not you are going to retaliate or not, and why. But as for the legitimacy or the right, I believe it's there. Even under the New Testament, there is, there is a principle of restitution. Principle of restitution yes. presupposes the fact that you have a right to be paid back. And under the law, if you still want cow, they might tell you to bring back, to give back for. Okay, establishing the right. So you have, in the case of Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus says that, you know, if I've stolen anything from somebody, I will give them four times. And Jesus says, the salvation has come into this man's house. Because okay. he is not asking for a free pass. The fact yeah. that we ask for forgiveness doesn't make, you know, because, you know, uh, uh, people steal money, then they give some to the church. <laughs> 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 and they, they feel that that has washed the, the, the rest of the money. Whereas, <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking, speaking, it's not going to happen. Let's, let's look at another one while, while you are here. Uh, you know, do we have a right to a good reputation? You are a good man. You are an honest man. You are a man of integrity. Do you have a right to a good reputation? I believe, I believe you do, particularly if, if you have been working at it, you know, to, to maintain certain standards of decency and honesty and propriety. So I believe you do, in which case, if a scenario comes up where somebody or something is trying to rubbish your personality and your reputation, the, it is natural to feel the need to fight to, uh, um, uh, to sustain or uphold your dignity or your reputation. So, But now, but now uh, uh, Sam, Jesus says that be of no reputation. It says, give it up. It says, uh, uh, you know, blessed are you when they say bad things about you. So he is asking us to relinquish our desire to have a good reputation. What do you make of that? The man, the, the man, the man is always asking us for things things that he himself already knows that is going to pinch us and rob us the wrong way now. He's always <laughs> asking us. <laughs> Who are you talking about? <laughs> Jesus Christ. He, he, knows, he knows. He knows now. And he asks us. It is the same principle of an eye for an eye because he has already concluded. He knows that, yes, he, that the, there's a legitimacy in an eye for an eye. But he knows that if you, if he allows everybody to do an eye for an eye, the whole world will be blind. Therefore, he now provides the option of, okay, my own people who... That's the emphasis, that's the emphasis point. Yeah, go on. 
I know you I know you people have the right to retaliate, but as far as you are my own people, don't worry, leave it. Leave it to me. Let me do it for you. You know, which is usually really painful because you don't know when he's going to do it, how he's going to do it, and you might not be there to see it. And really <laughs> 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 Or like the way he's going, he's going to do it. <laughs> exactly. You suffer the experience. And you might be thinking in your mind that, uh, but Jesus, that was not what I would have done no, if it was, if you left it for me to do by myself. But he, that is his own way. He says, do it this way. So when it comes to our reputation, he also knows that some of us may go to any length to, to, um, to save that reputation. And in the process, we just end up, we just end up uh, 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 ridiculing ourselves in the in his sight as his followers. And we, so we, end up, says, we end up committing sins. Exactly. We might, we might go beyond even. <laughs> uh, uh, you now come and do more than what you should have done. <laughs> you know, then it creates another problem altogether. So it's a question of choosing, choosing or uh, getting understanding which one is easier from his point of view, either to just calm down and leave it to him to handle in his own way, or go ahead and do your own and end up and risk and risk messing up even for uh, 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 greater than the problem you are trying to solve. Thank you, Sam. Let's hear from you, Mr. I don't think anybody has any right to a good reputation. <laughs> <laughs> the right to a good reputation. No. You don't think anybody has a right to a good reputation? So should, 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 so, so should you be accused? Should you be accused of stealing a goat when you didn't touch the goat? If if Jesus said that the no 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 the, answer my question answer my question should you be <laughs> should, should you <laughs> if Jesus said should you be accused that, of stealing a goat when you were not even you, that, didn't, you, you didn't come to that place at all? And the man said that no, it is here. We see that stole the goat. If the if the teacher is going to, was 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 um he said he was casting out uh, um demons by by Belzebub. And whatever. now you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are changing you are changing the discussion. I'm not changing. I'm talking about you now. Leave Jesus no, out yeah, of I'm it. Saying. Leave Jesus alone. Leave Jesus alone. I say. I'm <laughs> saying. We should, I, I'm saying we should not. We should I'm, not. I'm saying you, yeah, me see, you didn't, you, you not even come to that village. But now they came and arrested you and said, you are the one that stole the goods. I'm huh? I'm just, I'm, what I'm trying to say is. Should you that... defend yourself? <laughs> <laughs> or should, you, should you accept that, okay, I, you know, I, there's, 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 there's something that David said. I've been, I, I have it written down somewhere, but I've been looking for it. It, it, let, let me let me give you a literal understanding of it. David said that they told him that he stole ten naira, and he never took it. So what did he do? He paid it back. Now it's it's a it's, a, it's an incredible scripture. <laughs> you understand? He says if they if they tell if they say that he stole ten naira, which he didn't take at all, he is going to pay them back the ten naira. Now. Should is it right for them to say he stole money that he didn't steal? That's the first question I will pose. Before you bring Jesus in, no. <laughs> you are entitled. <laughs> you are entitled to you know you didn't steal. Why should you? Your reputation should be intact. But uh, it's, 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 your reputation should be intact. Like huh? Yeah. And no, also, you are using. Certain parameters again that I would I, using I, parameters I, that are, that occur in the world. Yeah, but should you be accused of other things? Should you should you be, should you should you be accused of being ugly? That's what I'm saying. You shouldn't you shouldn't be accused of of, of being what of being of being ugly. Should you be accused? That's not an of, accusation. <laughs> <laughs> you have a right. That's, yeah. that's, not, that's not an accusation. You have I mean, a right. Whether you are ugly or handsome. I mean, I interviewed, I, I interviewed a lady today, and her name was Beauty. <laughs> and I asked, you know, how come your name is Beauty? <laughs> 
you know, I, I thought it was very, very, very interesting name. You know, I, I forgot when I forgot your name. I said pretty. But then you said no, I name is beauty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, they, 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 that's that's different. They, they, well, as uh, but even the, the Bible says that he, Jesus made himself of no reputation. Yeah, so he. So, okay, so he, you know, but he was entitled to a good reputation. Really. Okay, wait, 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 who will be more entitled to a good reputation? He went about doing good, healing all, and he still has a bad reputation? Come on, let me see. But according to Kingdom Dynamics, in this world, if you are doing good, then you should expect that that's your what, that's, 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 that's what we are trying to, that's what we are trying to, that's the whole <laughs> point of this discussion. We are saying that you don't, you have to accept that you are no longer relevant in the equation. If any man wants to follow Jesus, he should deny himself. When we deny ourselves, then the issue of our reputation does not come into the matter anymore. It just, it just doesn't feature again because uh, we are already accepted in the beloved. And you just say that. It doesn't matter what people think about you anymore. You know, I've already accepted you. That's the main, that's the most important thing. Don't now start running after the reputation of, of people whose breath is in their nostrils. They are not relevant. They're not relevant. Huh? So let me go to uh, um, Victoria Joshua. I'm here. Victoria, Victoria, good evening. Good evening, sir. Okay. Do we have a right to spend our money, to spend money the way we like? Hmm, that's a tough question. Oh. Well, yeah, we have we have a right to spend money the way we like. But um um first and foremost the money we have that we think we have is not actually ours because um we are given money to lend it or to take care of god's own to lend it to god apparently to lend it to people who god cares about so um um at the end of the day it's still, I think we don't have the right to spend money the way we like. So it depends on what you're spending it on. You can either spend it um, for God's purpose or spend it selfishly on yourself. But we have the right to spend the money the way we like. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you are speaking from both sides of your mouth. I mean, hold on. A man works on the building side from morning but to true. night, and he walks, he walks, he sweats, etc. for eight hours. They give him some money, right? Okay? Yeah. Now, does he have the right to now spend that money the way he wants to spend it? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> does he have the right according to Jesus? Uh, yes, now a workman deserves his wages now. It's so, how it is, but not how he spends it. <laughs> he says, you deny yourself. Okay? Yeah, deny yourself. You want, to, you want to be a disciple. So he, he's worked all day and sweated <laughs> for eight hours. He collects that money. And then <laughs> on the way, he meets Victoria. And Victoria says, look, oh, I see me see trouble, though. I need some money to pay my rent. Now, to this man that has worked for all these hours in the sun, give that money to Victoria. Or she did say, wait a minute. <laughs> I worked for this. Work for this. <laughs> all day. I mean, you know, my even my back is aching as a result. What should he do? Well, for Christ's sake, 
And for the fact that he's lending it to God, he should give it to Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying that because we use your name? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Uh, no, I'm, no, just, no. I'm just pulling your leg. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay. Now, let's understand this. Let's look at Luke 16, 11. Okay. Please, oh, I'm here. I'm in the service. Luke 16, 11. If you are untrustworthy, about worldly wealth. Who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's money, why should we be entrusted with money of your own? Now, Victoria, which Sir? money is other people's money? Other people's money. Yes. Which money is other people's money? Are you going I think other people's money is the money you have. It's the money, money, the money you have, but the money you earn. Yeah. Okay. okay. The money you earn, the money you work for is actually not your money, according to Jesus. Hmm. It's other people's money. Huh? So, his hmm. disciples must deny themselves. And part of that denial is realizing that not all the money that comes with their pocket belongs to them. Huh? Wow. Thank you. Thank let, me you. Go to let me go to Elijah. Oh. El Jazz. Hello, sir. Good evening. Are you, are you okay? Are you with us? Are you disposed to answer some questions? Yes. Okay. Well, Elijah. I'm with, I'm with us, sir. Elijah, you went yes, to a party. Yes. You went to a party. Uh, do you have a right for them to serve you? The right for them to serve me? Yes, you know? to serve you rice, to serve you drinks. The right for them to serve me rice and things. You went to a party and you sat down. Do you have a right to be served? I think yes, as a guest. As I guess, I'm not right. sure whether uh, that's difficult to ask, but I think uh, I have the right. I have the right. Have so the if, they right. Don't yes, you, if they don't serve you, if they don't serve you, should you should you pick up a fuss? No, I, no. And because you have a right, that according to you. Yes, I have a right, but to be I mean, served. I, but but you yeah. you <laughs> so it. If you have a right to be served, you cannot you cannot fight for that right. Then it is not a right. Can you can you accuse them of not, of not serving you? What is the position of Christ in this situation? Uh, what is the right that Jesus gives to Elijah? In this situation, I'm still thinking about it. Okay, let me help you out. The only right that he gives you, Elijah, is the right to be a servant. He does not give you a right to be served. So you cannot insist on being served. But you can insist and you should help them to serve. So mm -hmm. if they don't serve you, don't say anything. Mm. <laughs> Everybody is eating rice, but Elijah doesn't have any. Mm. <laughs> Elijah is just watching them. Elijah just, is just watching them uh, mm. 
eat it. Let's look at Mark 10, 44. Whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. He says, we should not expect to be served. We should insist on serving. I mean, you know, so we, we, had a, we had a Christmas party. At uh, this Christmas party, I was carrying drinks to people to serve them. And you know, people had a problem. Some people had a problem with me serving them with the drinks. Because they just felt it's not appropriate. I mean, you know, how can you, you know. So I, I, I went to uh, uh, Peter, said, we drink you want. So no, no, let me, you know, this this principle is, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a difficult principle. If you are not careful, people will just, will not allow you to operate in it. Unless you insist. Uh, because he says, we should operate as servants. Yes, Samukwa. Um, I just want to point out something. In this operating in this principle, let us go first of all uh, back, uh, back to the the scenario you painted about Elijah at a party, and they are serving everybody. Everybody is eating, and it's not. And he hasn't been served. And then you say, uh, well, if they don't serve you, then you insist on, on being a servant. I, I hope you know that in this kind of scenario, where he's insisting on being a servant, some people are going to conclude that the reason he's going, he wants to serve is so that he will make sure that he, he serves himself. <laughs> since they didn't no, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Sam. Sam. <laughs> I'm not saying that you invited to a party, you insist, you, you know, no, no, no. no. That's different. I'm saying that in that scenario, you don't insist on being served. Okay. Then no, the you second not, not, that, not that you, you know, we tell your party to translate yourself into one of the servers. <laughs> you can help somebody who is serving. There's nothing wrong with that. But by the time you now go into the kitchen to come out, they will wonder what is what exactly is this. <laughs> <laughs> Have you? Yes, no. The, the second scenario. <laughs> the, the second scenario where where you were at a Christmas party where you were serving and people were having issues with it. You know, I can I I, I can imagine that for a moment it never occurred to them. They never stopped to consider that, assuming that Christmas party was taking place in your house. And you were there was every would they be insisting that no in your own house they will stand up and go and be carrying things to come and serve you and find it odd that you the owner of the house would be no, some, some, some people would still find it odd though. They will still find and it that, odd. They will they will want to they will get up and want to collect the thing from you to you know even if it's in your inside. even if it's in your house. Then, you know, then because I think you are older than them, or they, it's because you are a person that is in authority over them, or something, they would still. Uh, whereas, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the transposition that Jesus wants to make is that when he puts us in the position of authority, he puts us there as a servant, not as a master. But so we, culture <laughs> depend, requires us to operate as a master. That is a problem. And uh, it, it appears that a lot of people have a big problem getting past that cultural. This uh, is it. Uh, uh, they will not. They will not <laughs> accept it. Okay, so, so let, let, let me give you. Let me give you something that happened. You know, I was a student. I was a student at Oxford, and my mother came to visit. 
So when she came to, it was not my mother, it was my auntie. So when my auntie came to visit, uh, uh, and um, we decided to cook for her, you know? And she was very angry that I was, I was doing the cooking with Karen. And, and <laughs> she said that she would not eat the food. And that, you know, this Onyibo lady has turned her, her uh, uh, what is it, uh, cousin or whatever, yes, into, into a, a mumu. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> somebody, <laughs> you know, now, <laughs> uh, now uh, that is just a, a, a cultural chauvinism from <laughs> beginning to end, you know, and it's surprising uh, that it is coming from a woman, uh -huh. you know, well, we would have thought that, you know, I mean, it would be the opposite, but it was a woman that was. Now say no, the woman is the one supposed to be cooking and serving, and the man is the one supposed to be relaxing, etc. And the woman is saying that, you know, she's offended that it is not that way. But you know, this is how all these cultural norms, but we have to insist on them, you know, because at, at the Sally Joker said she wasn't going to eat. For this reason. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I mean that is trying to enforce that perspective. On you. Well, at least she drank water since you didn't make it. <laughs> I know she ate in the end. <laughs> By the grace of God, she ate in the end. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, let me let me let me go back to Bege. Mr. Yandang. Yes, sir. You went to you went to a restaurant. And you ordered some food, and uh, yeah. you, you've seen the bill that you know this particular dish is actually ten thousand naira. You are going to pay for the rice in this particular part of the this, but then there was too much salt in it. Do you have a right to complain? <laughs> ah. Uh, I do. <laughs> Why are you laughing now? What is making you laugh? Ah, uh, it, it's, I mean, <laughs> this is food, though. <laughs> I, I have your rights. I have your rights to complain. Should you complain? After, or after should, you, or should you relinquish your rights? Because Jesus says, deny yourself. Well, I may not, I may pay the money <clears throat> and not, um, and not um, say I would not pay because there's too much salt, but. Will you complain? So, um, I, I think I should, I think I, I should complain. I would complain on that. Should you complain? Even if, uh, yes, I think so. This is a, this is a, this is a, Okay, now this is why I think I think um, I should complain because it is it is good for their business. So it's good for their what? It's good for their business. The feedback is actually yeah, you are fooling yourself. So really, the reason, <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why you are complaining is because of your concern for their business, Abi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> because uh, the, the, if I want to, if I want to satisfy my myself, if I really want to take an action to say, look, I'm not going to pay you. this food that you're doing. I'm not even eating. After putting the first spoon, I'll say, please come and take your food, and then I walk away. But if I somehow manage to eat the food, there's something we see. I mean, if you have eaten the food, why complain afterwards? If it was not worth eating, you should have left it. That's uh, it's me and some of my friends will say so. Well, then, all those people who, well then begin, who, begin, the, the point of this discussion is yeah. what to do about this scripture. Philippians 
do all things. Hmm. Underline all things without complaining and disputing. That you may become blameless and harmless. Children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, deny yourself. So there is too much salt in the food. How can you handle this in, in situation without complaining and disputing? Well, I, for me, I think the best way I would handle it is to, to let them know that the food is salty. So I am not going to scream or shout or it's an issue decide of it. I'm not. Yes, I'm not going to make an issue of it. You will still pay the bill? Still pay the bill. You will still give a tip? <laughs> no, I would not give it. <laughs> <laughs> I will not give it. If I'm able to manage it, if I'm able to, I would, I would manage and eat, and then say, hey, this food is salty. You know, next time try and um, make it better. You know, even not for me, other customers, and just you know, give them that feedback, pay the money, and go. I would not. I'm not well. And you, you will not okay. come back. Uh, <laughs> I, I might come back. It depends. So if I'm eating there for the first time. I may not come back, but if I've eaten there before and you know, you know that it's just a mistake, you would, you would, I mean, you'll still come back. And about the tip, imagine that you had, yes, it was a bad meal, but the person who served you, you know, served you well. I'm not sure. I, I think at that point, I would still, you know, want to tip the person, despite the fact that the, the meal wasn't too good. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, Missy, how would you handle this situation? Okay, I have, right, right. Yeah. I have a right to retaliate. To. I'm not going to. <laughs> since, 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 uh, if they use Maggi to cook the stew, you will tell them. <laughs> okay, at least, yeah, Missy, yeah, go on. I'm, um, I, I think it's important to, to make a complaint, not to cook. Not to complain in quotes, but I agree with Bege that you are helping the, the person by telling them. Yes, <laughs> well, what's the difference between telling them and complaining? Well, complaining is different because complaining sounds like you're whining about, and it's not constructive. But making a complaint is actually a constructive thing and it's actually a positive thing because you are for me in my own profession i welcome criticism because criticism actually helps me so if somebody says to me a b c d e i use it to improve my work so i think that the things that one would probably avoid is uh, you don't pay them uh you start shouting at the you start shouting at the top of your voice, you make a scene, you, um, you, you push the food off the table, all those kinds of things. No. Okay, so yeah, see, yeah, see, let, let me give you this scenario. This is a real life scenario. You know, when I, um, I took, uh, um, we took um, uh, Karen's uncle and aunt out for dinner in New York. After the dinner, I gave a tip. The uh, waiter came back and said the tip was too small, <laughs> and that that it must be uh, twenty percent or something. Or what's that effect? Um, what would you do? I would give it to him because I I, I think also a, that's a cultural thing, isn't it? As, as then, in, then, is this a tip then? If, we, <laughs> if they, I refuse though. I, 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 you know, and, no, and you, you know, you know how, but I don't know what I would do today. But you know, this was several years ago, many years ago. 
Uh, and 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 they brought the money back. They said, okay, then I should not give them any tip. I said, fine, this is not my money. I put it in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> now, what would be the the way of Christ? What would be the way of Christ to, to handle that situation? You give somebody a tip and he said it's not enough. You know the funny thing of me. Sometimes I do the counterintuitive thing because I know that person wants to quarrel. So in fact, that is more wicked. That's you you shut them down by doing that thing that they asked for. There's so you know, I wonder what God's opinion is on that. Because sometimes you somebody will come up in your face that they want to fight. And you, and you just smile and walk away. And that is actually, in a sense, more um, confrontational. I don't know how to put it. OK, all right. Uh, Festus, are you with us? Mr. Dekera? Yes, sir. Good evening. Evening, sir. Do you have to? Do you have the right to live by your own standards? Did you Did you hear my question? No. no. Yes, I understand. You said you have the right to live by your own standard. Yes. Uh. No. Why do you say no? Um, I, um, I feel that um, as far as we uh, uh, we have we have been converted, um, we don't have to live with our own standard because we. We have to live with the the standard with the standard that we have received. So our own standard is a dead standard. Uh, we have a new standard, which is the principle of God, how He wants us to live. So our standard is not uh, that important. Rather, the standards that we have for God. And that's why I say no. I'm not sure we uh, live to our own standards. What if your standard, what if the, I, I don't know how to create the hypothesis in this situation. What if the, um, the Christ standard is to give somebody five naira, but you want to give 10 naira? Is that okay? No. It's Christ and Jesus is, says give them five naira and you feel okay, I, I can even do better than that. I may give him ten. Is that all right? Let me give uh, no. Why do you say uh, no? Uh, okay, um is is all all right, because I, I felt that um, it's all right because um, um, Jesus has given me a free will. Um, not they have limited me, so I feel that since it's not something bad that I'm doing, um, I can decided to to do more than that. Um, and there is no problem with that because it's not something bad that I'm doing. Is something that you, 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 you can do more than what Jesus asked you to do. Uh, uh, because he says that um, we are going to do more than, we are going to do things more than the way he does. He was talking about, about works of miracles. But anyway, go on. Uh, yes. So, um, <sighs> Is is because I, I I look at it this way. Um, when you are when you were uh, 
not <laughs> you are born again and then you have you have a, you are limited to something. You have some rules and regression that they put. They say don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do no, this. Well, well, that is that has nothing to do with my question. They are the ones eighty exactly. year old now. I never bought any of those. I said it is between you and Jesus now. No, we don't. Not the, the one that said yes. don't, don't do that. With Jesus, I know there is a room. Um, there is a room for for improvement. So if he said I should give five naira to the person. Um, you can give the person ten naira. Uh, not possible. I, I, I am. Uh, it's, it's it's very tricky. So uh, I, I can't say it. I uh, will give the person ten naira because maybe at that particular time he felt that that five naira that I will give the person is enough. Okay, for instance, let me let me hear from Victoria. Victoria, go ahead. Okay, I I wanted to say. Um, I think in a way, okay, your own standard is to give 10 Naira and Jesus' standard is 5 Naira. If you are giving 10 Naira, assuming that your standard is now higher than Jesus' standard, that is self-righteousness in itself. Hmm? Except if... um, um I don't know because except if you are now you are like trying to like um for Christ's sake I, I can even be for Christ's sake because can be for now you're again, man. yeah so at the end of the day it still falls back to you doing your own standard not Jesus standard and it's self-righteousness that's what I think let's look at Romans 10 2 Okay. He said the Israelites have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge. So they are zealous, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. If Jesus tells you to give five naira, please don't give ten. Huh? We can't be more righteous than God. Do exactly what he tells you to do. So deny your righteousness. Now, uh, let me go to uh, Chu Chu. You are the, you are the, Hypothetically, you are the oldest member of your family. There are four children, and you are all seated. Now, should you and you want to, you want to, uh, you want to take the chicken? Should you go first? No, I shouldn't. But you are the oldest. It doesn't matter. I shouldn't I should, because how do I even know that the chicken will go round? So the others should eat first. You allow the others to eat first before you. Yes. What if they, they by the time they get to you, there is no more chicken? Eh, that's why I'm the oldest. <laughs> that's why you are. <laughs> that's why you are the oldest. Okay, yes. hold that thought. Hold that thought. Let me let me bring somebody else into it. Benedict. I'm still. We are coming back to you, to Benedict. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. You are the oldest in your family. I am sitting down. No, to uh, yeah? By providence, and uh, I'm not the oldest. Keep quiet. But, uh, this, 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 this. 
Who, who is talking about oh. the actual situation? I'm creating the scenario. I agree with me. Okay, uh, okay, sir. Okay. So uh, all the other people that are with you are, you know, one is 10 years younger, another one is 20 years younger than you. Now, who should take the chicken first? You or those small Hello. Comrades? We will do knowledge now. Which we want to take first? Who do, who do you take first? The last one you take. The last one you take first. The last one. The youngest one. Yes. Youngest one. Yes. And, and you, when when should you take chicken? Yeah, you're right. I'll be the last one to take chicken. Why? The last Why? One what, if, what if by the time everybody takes the chicken, there is no more chicken in the place? Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the 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 address is that I should just be watching, I should not be thinking of things. You, you just say that I, the chicken should to, to, to go around. <laughs> so even, even if the chicken should go around, I should not think of it, but the problem is that this our body will not agree. <laughs> this is what you want to react, but then we have to swallow it. I know that we are not able to take offense. I understand what you are saying. But then as you are you are saying that you're, you're supposed to think for so you have like five something yeah, yeah. on the in the pot and everybody just took took took. You want that to belong, somebody has just took it and had it for his own. You're not supposed to react. Oh, that your body wants to react. So you just swallow it like that. And that is the vision that we normally find ourselves. Well, let, let, me, let me go, let me go to back to Chuchu. Chuchu. I'm here. So you bought some ice cream, right? Put it in the freezer because you are planning to have it that evening. But by the time you came to the to, to get your ice cream, Benedict has eaten the ice cream. What should you do? What should I do? Yes. Uh, Benedict dumped, in fact, he didn't even just take part of it. He ate the whole ice cream. Uh, I don't, what should I do? Apart from going inside the room to cry, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what are you crying about because of ice cream? <laughs> What do you do? What, what, what are you going to do with? What are you going to do to Benedict? What, what, what am I going to do to Benedict? I can't really do anything to him. Will you say anything just, to him? If I say anything to him, I'll probably break his head. So I wouldn't say anything to him. I'll just go and sit down and go. Because no, the next time he will, he will take your ice cream again or if you don't. You know. No, the next time I will not even put my ice cream in the freezer. <laughs> <when I didn't. laughs> you will not put your ice cream in the freezer so that you will not touch it. Where will you put it? <laughs> we get to that bridge we'll cross. <laughs> you will put it somewhere else. Huh? No, but that would now make you start being start being conscious of your things and hiding your things. What's the point? So what, what are you going to do? You, you, you not buy ice cream again. You will buy ice cream. Stop talking. You are the one eating people's ice cream. You are still talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy. And maybe the next time I might even buy it too so that Benedict can take his own if he wants to. And I'll I, still have my shop. Are, are you just saying that? You will no, now go to Benedict not. and say, Benedict, you don't have to take it now. I, don't even I want won't, to won't tell him. No, I won't tell him. I'll just buy it and put it there. So I know that if Benedict being Benedict comes and still sees ice cream and still feels like taking ice cream, it will take one and I will still get my share of ice cream. But by the time you, by the time Benedict took one, the kid took the other one. <laughs> Mm. So will you buy ice cream again? <laughs> I'll will probably you... avoid ice cream for a while. <laughs> Let's look at this scripture. Uh, uh, Philippians 2 3. I'm 
disarrange this now, so I don't I don't know where all of them. It says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. Now, this, you know, I mean, this is not this is not an easy scripture. Let it esteem others better than himself. Can you do this, Chuchu? Yes, I can. Uh, uh, Benedict, do you esteem others better than yourself? Yes, sir. You do? Yes. Why do you do that? Um, I do, I don't know. I, the only reason that I do, I, I do so is because of Jesus. One, because I like everything, everybody to be, to be all right. I want everybody to be, to, to be fine, but just that I, 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 everybody cannot be fine at the same time because of the principle of God. I I pay people some difficult um, issues of life, but I can't control things. That, I think one that's one of the reasons. That's why when I see I, I, if everything is fine with people, I'll be all fine together. I'm okay with that. But just that it can happen on the God want things to happen that way. I cannot see myself eating or I'm not eating or bring a thing that I'm only that is on top to, to come down. I can't enjoy it. That one is good. I don't know. I want you to be okay. I want you to move to a stage. That's okay. I, or you we were together before. And you're not doing well. I I see what you are doing I'll be for you. I wonder how God is working. Well, it's a very good virtue, but it's not easy. It's not easy. Thank you. And when I see people, people sorry, sir, when I see people have difficulty with life, I wish I can do something, but I know that God is with this work of God. And that I can do no, about this. Is, this is saying a little bit more than that. It says that you prefer yeah. them to yourself, not that you are going to help yeah. them. Yeah. I know. You prefer them to yourself. So, for instance, if you want to eat and then you realize that this person hasn't eaten, you give the person the food and you don't eat. Okay. All right. Let's look at the last the last question uh, tonight. Let me go to Elijah. Elijah. If, uh, good evening. Yes, if, if, if the government says that nobody should go to church anymore, would you obey? The, the federal government passes a law. that nobody should go to church. Would you obey the law? Uh, okay, so for me, the recently the definition of uh, a church is no longer a building for me. It's not just on law, not just a building, but a group of people together and all of that. So I'm not sure if that my well is going to affect me personally. Like, the, that, I mean, that that church question, already. Will you obey? Will you obey the law? It says no going to church. Will you obey? 
Uh, I'm not sure it's. Uh, I will. I will obey. Why would you obey? I won't obey. You won't obey. I won't obey the law. Why won't you obey? Well, the government is your, is a legitimate authority. Yeah, but they don't have they don't have the final authority. They are not the final authority. They have authority, but they have higher authority. So then how do you determine what they have authority to tell you to do or not to do? Because the government passes laws. So because the their law is now against um, you can't have two laws that one will not supersede one. So the laws that me I'm going to obey is the one that uh, we affect my relationship with God positively. And so I know the one that if I'm going to church, that will affect it positively. Not going to church. Uh, I mean, I don't see, I don't know how that will affect. Government can, they, they, they might look like they have the power, but obviously they don't. So which one are you so, saying now? I'm not sure I'm getting you now. Will you obey the law that says you shouldn't go to church or not? No, the one I'm saying is I'm not going to obey the government's law. I will disobey government. It's against the law of the law of, okay, I'm going to, to church because of the fellowship I have with Christ, meet with saints and all of that. Okay. So I know that one is more important. How do we 